Hey everyone, Raif Darazi here, and this is the night before my flight to Istanbul, Turkey tomorrow, where I will be getting a hair transplant. What? Raif, you don't need a hair transplant, you're saying? Well, thank you. So taking it back, I wasn't exactly in search of getting a hair transplant. I have thought about it numerous times in the past. I've researched it, I've looked it up, I've, you know, followed Instagram accounts that specialized in it. Um, I don't really have, so I'm thinking about my hairline. I don't really have hair loss there. I've always had a high forehead genetically. That's just what it is. It's a five head. That's my genetics. It's always been like that ever since I was a little kid. And I've always thought about, wow, it'd be like kind of cool to get a hair transplant and look, just lower the hairline, fill in the temples a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. And also... Um, I forget how many years ago, but I started to notice thinning in my crown. I started to take finasteride for that and it, it instantly stopped it, even got a little more um, hair density back. But they're going to take a look at that and see if they want to put any there as well. But primarily the focus is on lowering my hairline a bit. And they mentioned about, and of course this is just from pictures because I haven't been there in person yet for the consultation. But based on the pictures I sent them, they're thinking like 3,000 graphs <laughs> so 3,000 holes in my head where they're where they are going to take hair out 3,000 of those and then 3,000 places where they are going to insert it into my head for a total of 6,000 holes in my head if you're like me and you have um what's the name of that fear oh oh I can't even think about it where you see Oh, lots of holes. Um, I gotta look it up really quick. Uh, fear of lots of holes. Oh, trypophobia. Look it up if you haven't heard of it. It's a real thing. Trypophobia. T-R-Y-P-O. Phobia. Um, and, and seeing pictures of hair transplants like after they've just had it done and all the holes. Ooh, ooh, it makes my skin crawl. Um, so that's what I have to prepare for. So, this clinic, Hair Center of Turkey, reached out to me via Instagram, the wonders of social media. Uh, they have two and a half million followers. You can look them up at Hair Center of Turkey, I believe. I'll have all the information down below in the description box. Anyway, um, they have great reviews. I liked all their content that they had on Instagram. It looks really good. They have like really polished videos as well of people getting before and after with the hair transplant. Um, they have great reviews on Google as well. And you can also see like independent videos on influencers, YouTube channels where they had um, the procedure done and everything looks good. I'm going to take them up on it. YOLO. You only live once. And so I'm going to take them up on this offer. Let's go. Let's just do it. So here are the details. All I had to take care of personally was the flight. Uh, they are going to set me up in a five star hotel. They are going to pick me up from the airport, take me to the hotel. They'll take me from the hotel to the clinic each day that I need to go and back. And then they'll take me back to the airport at the end of the week when I'm ready to go home. So like I've done in the past with other cosmetic procedures and things, I will document this for you. And hopefully you will walk away with a better understanding of what getting a hair transplant may entail. Of course, depending on where you go and who you see. But this should give you a general idea of what to expect as I uncover in real time what to expect. <laughs> of course, I had some reservations. My agent, as well as many other loved ones in my life, were like, Rafe, how do you know that this is legit? How do you know that this Instagram account is real? They could have faked the followers. How do you know that the Google reviews are real? They could have faked those as well. That's not that hard. Um, their website could be fake, their WhatsApp, all of that, the way that they're communicating with you. Have you corroborated anything? And honestly, so I've looked at their Instagram and their Google reviews and their website and the WhatsApp that I'm communicating through them with and all of the contact information matches. That's good, right? And then I can also see independent influencers like this guy with like, uh, over two and a half million subscribers on YouTube getting his hair transplant done at Hair Center of Turkey. And in the description box below his video, he has the same WhatsApp that links to the WhatsApp that I'm currently communicating with. So 
all the corroborating evidence put together, I'm not worried. Yes, it's crazy. I'm going to a foreign country I've never been to before to meet people I've never met to get a procedure I've never had before. I'm going by myself because that's just the way I didn't have a choice. That's just how the cards, you know, played out. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to do it. So in the meantime, I've been doing a ton of research and talking to people about hair transplants and Reddit has been a huge source of great information for me. There's some, there's like a hair transplant subreddit you can follow. I've been following that. People have provided incredible resources on there. What to expect before, what to, what to prepare for beforehand, what to expect during, and then what to expect for the healing process after. And how the hell do you get home from Turkey on a plane looking like, I don't know, the elephant man all bandaged up and potentially oozing out of your head and get on a plane and go home and deal with all of that. So that's been an endeavor to research, but I got a bunch of stuff that I prepared. So I'll show you some of the things that I've, I got for the trip and why. So first things first, I got this neck pillow, like travel neck pillow. And that is essentially after I get my procedure, my, the grafts that are going to be placed in my head are going to be very loose and something as easy as hitting my head or resting it on something can dislodge it and kill it essentially so when i go to sleep at night i have to have this around my neck and i have to sleep i'm supposed to be a little bit elevated as well because there can be swelling and inflammation and so you want your head to be elevated above your body preferably around 30 degrees um so i'll just have a bunch of pillows behind me and then i'll also have this around my neck and then just try to sleep on my back as best as possible without like rolling over and potentially you know pressing my head against the pillow so neck pillow and that's also really great for when i'm traveling home on the flight that'll keep everything nice and secure okay i heard that there is the potential for oozing especially out of the donor site because you know grafts are actually being pulled out so you have literal holes there that have to heal so yes there will be bandages covering the holes however um, there still could be some oozing and it might get through go through the bandages So I bought these pillowcases to actually cover the hotel pillows because I've heard the past From people who didn't have that that it went through the bandages onto the pillow case or the pillow itself and Then you're damaging, you know hotel property. You're gonna get charged for that in addition to the pillowcases that I'm bringing I got this big old bag of puppy pee pads. I probably got too many. I mean, I hope I don't need that many. Um, and so I'm thinking I'm going to put a pee pad on the hotel pillow and then cover that with my pillow cover so that if there is oozing, it goes on to my pillow cover. And if it goes through that, it goes into the pee pad and it gets absorbed there. There's no way it's getting onto hotel pillow property. It might be overkill, but I would rather be overly prepared and take every precaution then find myself in a position where I'm like, oh shit, I wish I would have done something or purchased something, right? In addition to that, <laughs> I got these, um, I'm not going to take it out because it's so neatly put in here, but they're disposable airplane seat covers. It's like a really like cheap, thin uh, fabric. And it, just put it over the, the seat cover on the plane. And that way, you know, I just think that's, it's courteous on my part, if I have oozing, whatnot, that that's not getting transferred onto the airline seat. And then in addition, I'm protecting myself from, you know, whatever microbes or whatever could be on the airplane seat getting onto my essentially open wounds. After the uh, procedure, it's expected to have swelling. And so um, I've heard people say that they have to wear headbands. So I'll have this put around my head to hopefully contain the swelling i've seen some pretty shockingly grotesque pictures not gonna lie of the swelling traveling down from the head into the eyes and people looking like they got hit by a car um so hopefully it'll keep it all contained from here up the swelling that is i've got this baby shampoo super gentle after the treatment you put this on and you just like use a cup of warm water to rinse it off. You don't want direct pressure. I'll get into all that stuff later, but that is, it's very sensitive for the scalp as it's healing. So I'm gonna use that. 
A couple things to treat my scalp. This aloe vera gel, this is specifically for the donor site because people have said that they get intense itching as it's healing and putting this on, just lightly coating it and the aloe gel is cooling and soothing and it helps. And then I also have this um, saline spray and I'm, I'm not 100% whether this is for the donor site or the recipient site or both sites, but I'm gonna talk to the doctor and see if they even recommend, but I wanted to have it on hand in case I need it while I'm there. So I've got all of that. And then also just having button up shirts because again, you don't want anything touching, especially the recipient site of the grafts because it, anything can dis dislodge it. So taking off on and off a shirt is exposing yourself to the potential of like, you know, the collar, or some part of the shirt rubbing and dislodging grafts. So you want to have button up shirts. So I brought a bunch of button up shirts and that'll all get packed up as well. So I'll get there tomorrow. They're going to pick me up from the airport. I'm going to go to the hotel and rest for the night. And then in the morning I'll go and then we'll do the console and talk to the, the doctor and everything and, and get their, um, their advice on everything. So I really want to bring in the camera and um, have it set up when I do the consult. So you can see what that's like. Also beforehand, you know, I mentioned obviously, hey, I mean, they did reach out to me on Instagram and it's very obvious if you look at my Instagram account that I'm living with HIV, I'm an HIV advocate, it's what I do. And, but I wanted to like be very direct and make sure that that was clear. I'm living with HIV. Is that an issue? Are you prepared for that? Even though in my head, I'm thinking it shouldn't be an issue at all whatsoever because I'm on medication, I'm undetectable. There's really no concern there. And when you're, when you're doing something in, the, in a clinical setting, you have to have certain practices anyway that should mitigate any concern over something like HIV. But it's helpful to communicate that and that I'm on, on medication and undetectable. So I communicated all that. They're totally cool with that. In fact, um, the person that I'm in contact with now said that one of their doctors actually did a YouTube video. It's in Turkish because I looked at it briefly, but there are captioned subtitles where they specifically address HIV, which I think is really cool and unexpected that they would even take the time to do a whole video on it as it relates to hair transplants. So I'm going to do a little more research on that and hopefully talk to the doctor about it because I'm sure that a lot of you folks living with HIV, you assume that there are so many things that are outside of the potential of what you can do for yourself because you have HIV or, you know, that you might get judged or criticized, but at least I can show you one clinic where they are, they are educated, they're well-informed and they're not judgmental and they're accepting of it. And so you know that there is potential if you do your research to find places where you can do the things you want in life because HIV shouldn't hold you back, nor should the stigma of people who are uneducated. So I think that's it for now. Um, I'm gonna finish packing. I'm gonna put all my gear, my camera, my tripod, my spare batteries, all that stuff. Try not to forget anything so that I have that. Um, and yeah, so that'll be interesting. And then the next time I see you will be when I'm in Turkey, um, probably at the hair center to go through the consultation. All right, uh, stay tuned. I will have that video up for you next. Cheers. Talk to you soon.